Hey guys, this is Full Snack Developer, and today I'm going to be walking you through uh, how I create my little snack icons that I've been making for my website and for Instagram. So uh, today I'm going to be showing you how um, I make a cherry. So let's get right into it. Um, usually the way I start with creating an icon is um, I start off with a little sketch in my sketch pad. Um, so here's a pic of it, uh, and I just, you know, quickly get down an idea and then head straight to the artboard on Illustrator. So let's get right into it. I'm going to start by grabbing the pen tool here, um, and I'm just going to be uh, blocking out um, a basic, the basic shape of uh, of the cherry. So just clicking and dragging some points. I'm just kind of roughing it out um, because once it's done up, I'm just going to shrink it down and zoom in a bit um, and then I'm gonna hit A to get me direct select tool and now I'm gonna just kind of refine the shape a little bit um, and uh, yeah just tweak it up make it exactly what I'm looking for here uh, get that nice cherry looking shape kinda like a squashed little bean look um, Cool, I think I'm liking that. Uh, that's pretty good. Obviously, we can always tweak whenever. Maybe just sharpen up these corners a little bit up there, yeah. Okay, um, that's looking pretty good. It's a lot of tweaking going on, um, but sweet. Yep, yeah, I like that. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, copy, paste in place, and now I'm gonna invert uh, the, the, uh, the fill and stroke. I'm gonna up the stroke to let's say eight, um, and now I'm gonna take this center piece, um, the fill here, um, and I'm gonna add a gradient. I'm gonna click on the gradient tool. I'm gonna click on the shape, and then I'm going to drag out, uh, drag out the gradient. Um, so uh, the way to adjust the color on the gradient is over here. Um, I've already got my cherry gradient. Start off with a a nice lighter red and then go into a deeper red um, and then uh, then I just uh, I can adjust the gradient by dragging this bar around stretching it out uh, until I got what I want so I think that's looking pretty good um, I'm gonna add now um, this little uh, this little uh, center line here kinda shows the indentation of the top part of the cherry um, and I'm just gonna use the pen tool just to make a line Right now it's fill, but I'm going to use the eyedropper tool uh, to just grab the sh same stroke so it looks like it kind of flows off that line. Um, now to uh, change the uh, thickness, I'm going to use a profile here the uh, with profile 4. Um, and this is going to taper that line to nothing. Now if you wanted to do uh, more of a um, customized uh, stroke width, you can use the width tool here and you can actually just change at different points you know, on any line. Uh, and, and do a bunch of crazy stuff. Right now, I like having uniform on the outside and uh, this taper to nothing is working well. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Um, so now we got a solid cherry shape going on. Um, I'm gonna start throwing in the shadowing. Um, so let's make this thing look 3D. Uh, I like to put my light up in the, uh, coming down from the top left corner. Um, that's just my preference. Um, you kind of got to think about uh, when you're trying to make an object look 3D, where's the light coming from and where's it going to cast shadows on the object and what shape does the object have. So this one's kind of sphere spherical. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of roundy, roundy uh, shadows and highlights going on. So I'm just going to start blocking out uh, where I think uh, the shadows should go. So something like this kind of comes along comes along the bottom of it a little bit um, we can adjust it now I'm just like quickly blocking out the outside of this and I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second uh, I'm gonna just smooth this out a bit here because we want a nice flowing curve now what you can do is actually um, select an object to make it smooth uh, you can actually go over here to the smooth tool you can use a bunch of different tools but it's in this menu smooth tool and I'm just gonna drag along the line um, that I want it to smooth out uh, and it's gonna do just that you can do it a couple times until you get the right effect if you want um, sometimes I do that um, sometimes I'll, I'll just play around with the with the bezier curves um, until I get 
you know, exactly that, that look I'm wanting. Um, and sometimes I use a hybrid of both. So I'm just gonna do another pass on it here. Just wanna get a nice curve shape going. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I think I like that. I might just change this one to come up a little higher. Tweak it there. I'm a tweaker. Um, and then just one more pass with the smooth tool just to make sure everything is smooth sweet okay um, I'm gonna grab this back layer here I'm gonna command C to copy and command shift V to paste in place uh, and it paste it right on top now I'm gonna select this other object that I made that I kind of just um, was using to outline the shadow and I'm gonna go over to the Pathfinder tool here and I'm gonna go for the intersection um, now this is gonna take um, I got two shapes selected and it's gonna um, remove everything except where they um, where they where they intersect um, so boom just like that um, so and I use this a lot so that's uh, you'll you'll see me doing this throughout the uh, tutorial um, so now uh, what I want to do to make the shadow is I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool again and I'm gonna make it the, the outline it like that um, but what I'm gonna do is actually invert it so that it's a solid color and then um, drop it down to about 30 uh, 30 is what I like to use for my shadowing um, for the most part and and it works pretty well so um, if you're doing a lighter object you might want to um, have a little bit less uh, but uh, really it's just um, your look and feel um, so now um, I'm going to uh, command shift um, uh, what is it left bracket and that's gonna send it to the back and then I'm gonna command forward bracket um, to bring it to the front to bring it up there we go um, so now it's um, in front of this, the red fill, and uh, behind this, uh, the red line. So now I'm going to do uh, my second tier of shadowing. Um, so again, I'm going to draw it out. I'm going to draw out where I want the shadow to go. And I want the shadow to run along kind of like that. Um, give that kind of curved bubble shape. Um, again, I'm going to copy, paste in place, take this, intersect, I'm going to eye drop so it's the same color as the shadow, and then I'm going to drop it down to 30%. And then we have our second tier of shadowing. Now I'm just going to smooth this out a bit. Yeah, actually, that looks pretty good. Um, and now I'm going to highlight it. Uh, so I'm doing the exact same thing I would on the shadow. I'm grabbing the pen tool again, and uh, I'm going to give it this kind of bubbly glow is what I'm going for. I want this look nice ripe cherry. Um, so I'm just uh, blocking out the shape. Now for highlights, I do white. I just change the color to white. Uh, and again, drop the opacity down to 30. Um, and again, I'm just pushing it back behind that line so that this big thick line covers up um, all those things. I'm going to take it, I'm going to smooth it out just in case there's any kind of jagged shape. And now that's looking nice and smooth and I'm going to add just this little extra bubbly glow at the top. Make it look real nice and shiny. I'm going to eye drop that same highlight and then push behind the line and there we go now I'm gonna jump back we got a nice ripe looking cherry there um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of a finesse uh, this is just kinda like my artistic style that I like to do for all of my icons um, I throw in this little bit of a um, out outline uh, that tapers off um, so this is where I'm actually gonna use the width tool I'm gonna taper off this to nothing um, but right about here, I'm just going to thicken it up a little bit. Um, so I like that. I usually like to run um, along a shadow, um, a shadow line. Uh, it's just typically what I do. I just like the style. Now I'm going to add the extra, um, extra little um, finesses, the, the, the taper off artistic lines. So I usually do two afterwards. So I'm going to select them both 
gonna up their thickness to I think about four, maybe three, um, and then use this uh, profile here that tapers on both ends. Um, and you know what? I worked perfectly. I like that. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll just thickness, a lot of tweaking. There we go. I like that. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I like this. Um, but it needs a stem. So let's get right to that. Um, uh, again, I'm using the pen tool. I'm just drawing a big old curve. Um, and it's going to have a big bulky stem and then it's going to taper down quite a bit. Uh, something like that. Now I can obviously, I'm going to go back and tweak this a bunch. So I'll select it at the A to do direct and oop, grab that and just do a little adjusting. What are we thinking here? Something like that actually. It might, this stem might have to be a little thicker. Just using the arrow tools, tools to, to move the anchors at the bottom. Um, actually, um, something like that. Just gotta t play around. Yeah, I think I like that. I might adjust this one here to be a little thinner at the top. You know what? I think that works. So now, just gonna invert it and push it to the very back. And yes, I like that. Now, um, usually what I like to do for my illustrations is um, uh, have an outline that's the same color all the way through. Even if, you know, the, the cherry's red and the stem is brown, it's always going to have that outline of red, usually. Uh, sometimes I'll, 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 I'll switch it up, but usually that's what I like to do. Um, so I'm just going to copy, paste in place, um, and then I'm going to invert it now. Um, and I'm going to eye drop this outline here. Um, and now I'm going to give this uh, centerpiece, uh, this or this fill on the stem, um, a gradient. And I don't want to use the red, so um, what I'm going to do is uh, draw out the gradient. Um, but now I'm going to go over here, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to change it to uh, more of a brown. Yeah, nice. Uh, nice brown. So I start light at the top and I choose a darker brown for the bottom. Oh, I'll have to go later. There we go. Oops. I accidentally adjusted the gradient. There we go. Okay. Um, and just push it all to the back. Take a look and see how that's looking. I think that looks, oh, looks pretty good. Um, now the color thing you can ask any designer color choosing is always a always a struggle. So um, a lot of time I go through a couple renditions of uh, of color selection. Um, always takes a little bit to get that right color you're looking for. Um, so I'm just trying to find maybe like a nice golden brown maybe. Got a lot of yellow. It's a little trickier uh, when you're using the uh, gradient because you have to use the RGB controls here. So, what do we think about that? You know what? I'm going to roll with it for now. And uh, if I want to change it, I'll go back later. But now I want to add just a little bit of a shadow to this top part here. So again, doing the exact same thing as I did before. Just kind of rolling along blocking out a shape. I'm going to copy, paste, and then I'm going to grab the intersection. And then I'm going to eye drop this, but then I'm, I don't want a red shadow. Um, I want a brown one, so I'm going to throw in a change the color to a brown. Oh, change the color to a brown. Cool. Um, I just want to adjust. Oh, adjust that. Now, See, this one doesn't have a handle here, so sometimes that'll happen. What you do is uh, Shift C, um, and then it'll it'll actually recreate the bezier. And then um, what you can do after that is actually go back into Direct Select, select the handle, and press Alt. Oh, whoops! Uh, press Alt. Oh. Um, 
There we go. Press Alt, and it'll free up that handle there so that I can move it wherever I'd like. Um, just going to tweak it up so it follows that line there a bit better. Yeah, I think that's, that's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. It's a little light, though. I think this color is a little light for a cherry stem. I think cherry stems are pretty dark, so... Gray brown. Let's see if we can't warm it up a little bit. Something like that. Maybe even give it a little bit of a reddish tinge to it. Yeah, okay. Okay. I like that. Move back, and we're getting pretty close to having our finished cherry illustration. Um, I think I'm going to add just a slight glow to the stem and see what that looks like actually maybe I'll just have it be kind of like a bubble up here finish that off and then uh, just pressing I am gonna grab the highlight of the same one on the cherry I'm gonna push it back behind that line there we go back behind that line and there we go. There is our illustrated cherry. I think it looks pretty good. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is, um, you know, if you wanna size it up, um, see how my stroke stayed, stayed the, the same thickness? Um, what you can do to ensure that is um, when you're uh, about to transform something, you go over the transform here and select uh, scale corners. So if you have rounded corners, it'll scale those. Uh, or strokes and effects, it will keep those effects intact. So if I uncheck this and I scale down, my outlines, as you can see, are going to stay the same thickness. And I definitely don't want that. So go back. Um, it's right here under the transform uh, and just select uh, scale, stroke, and effects. So that's a, that's a helpful, helpful little hint that I found out. Um, now I'm going to group these all together. So Command G. So now whenever I select one, I select the whole thing. Um, if I want to control pieces individually or go in and edit one thing particularly, I can just double click on the object and then I'm free to move the object around. Um, and then double click anywhere off the object and it will get you back into your regular, uh, regular stage. Um, so now what I like to do is just add some brackets around um, the snack item. So I'm just going to use the regular curly brackets, three spaces. Um, and I'm using the font uh, Mesa New Bold. And then I'm just going to scale it all the way up until I think it's a good size, actually. That's pretty good. Um, uh, now I'm going to select both of them, and I'm going to use the align tools up here. I'm going to align it center with the stage and right in the middle. Um, now this one, it's perfectly centered all the way, but I want to have the cherry um, uh, more inside the brackets there, kind of like that. Maybe line it up at the bottom. Um, and now I'm going to zoom out, um, and uh, I'm going to add uh, a, a square around my whole canvas. Um, push it to the very back, and shift back the bracket. Um, and now I'm just going to eye drop the... Um, the gradient that I use for the cherry. Um, and right now it's linear. I'm going to go over to my gradient options here. I'm going to change it from lineal to radial. Uh, and now I got this radial gradient going on. Um, I want to scale it out a bit. Just kind of line the circles with the corner there. Makes for an even radial gradient. Uh, and now I'm just going to change these brackets to white. And there you have it. There is our finished cherry illustration for full snack developer um yeah hopefully you guys found this useful um if you got any questions for sure leave me some comments uh check out my instagram at full snack underscore developer uh or check out my site uh full snack to get uh this background for your uh, computer or for your phone um and for sure i love to hear from you guys i hope you enjoyed mm -hmm.